Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I'd like to go over uh, a few things that I noticed that uh, you may kind of find a little strange or may find helpful um, about the Indian Chief. So, just a little precursor, mine is the 2022 Indian Chief Dark Horse. So, I am not sure if some of these things still apply to the newer models from 2023. Um, maybe they do, maybe they don't. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so first thing I would like to tell you guys is when you start up your bike, you may hear a very high-pitched ringing sound, and you should hear that because that is the computers in uh, the ride command and all this, like, turning on. So let me go ahead and shut up, and I'll let you guys hear that. So there you go. That was the uh, very annoying high-pitched ringing. <laughs> and uh, it, it works the same way when you turn off the bike too. So you can see it's already turning on, you know, it hit okay on the warning thing, whatever. Um, and then if you turn it back off, it does the same thing. It does that clicking sound too. Um, I assume that's probably just the computers and you know turning something off or whatever but uh yeah that's about it and you can see uh it's turned off so yeah that's about it um for the first thing so high pitched ringing noise when you turn on the bike and when you turn it off totally normal all right so for the second thing um this may or may not be applicable to 2023 models i don't entirely know but uh when these fr chiefs first came out the front forks here um they would make a clunking sound for a like lack of a better explanation. Um, some kind of like metallic clunk. Uh, let me go ahead and see if I can replicate that for you right now. I think I have it again. I'm not sure exactly if you guys heard that or not, but uh, when you depress, you know, the front forks, down far enough, it'll make like a kunk sound. Um, not entirely sure if they still do it or not, but Indian did, uh, at least for my case, offer a free replacement um, for whatever that part is that's making that funny noise in there. Um, I, I do know there's been a few YouTubers that have a, had a similar issue regarding the front forks uh, making some clunking noises, and they have also had their stuff replaced and it has come back so I don't know what the fix here is really um, but just something to look out for when you're getting a chief. Alright, the third thing would be tire pressure. Now that kind of goes without saying, you know, keep your tires inflated but I'm kind of an idiot so <laughs> I don't check them every time I ride and I know maybe most people do or may some people don't, I don't know. Um, either way, I don't check them probably as often as I should and uh, that goes for both front and rear. And what I've noticed is if your front tire is below 30 PSI, uh, the handlebars will uh, like wiggle something fierce um, on the highway. And you know, just in general, like I've noticed uh, r roughly around 50, 55 miles per hour, it'll begin to, you know, shimmy a little. Uh, so the fix for that, if you guys are having some wobbles in the front uh, handlebars, in the front end in particular, check your PSI and maybe that's what's causing it. So number four is the Rad Command GPS system. So uh, just in general, the navigation is pretty decent for, you know, what this is. It's a tiny little cluster attached to a bike that seems, you know, pretty bare bones except for the giant rats and nest or wires underneath all this but um i digress the gps system in here um as you can see it's i just went you know let's go to erie pa or whatever right so you can see here it gives you some pretty decent you know uh turn by turn navigation here you can see zoomed in and everything but on the highway if you're zoomed out far enough and it, I, this kind of goes without saying um, it is tough to see where your exit is, and you see how it says 230 30 feet to, you know, Manhattan Avenue, whatever. Um, 
that, you know, sometimes is not the most descriptive thing in the world. Uh, so, for example, I just got back from doing a Hershey ride, um, Hershey PA, and um, on the way there and on the way home, the exits on the highway were kind of weird. So my buddy Ray and I both went. He used Google Maps. I used this GPS system, which was fine, but both of them led us to the same areas, although this came up with like very strange you know continue on us 22 or whatever in the middle of nowhere <laughs> like it just said like uh, uh, we thought you know oh mine is sending us somewhere else other than you know google maps would would be sending my buddy ray and that wasn't the case it was quite literally the same path it was just super confusing um to see like oh, okay it just wants us to continue or something so you can go in here and you can see the turns and stuff and you can see all the turns I got to make to get to, you know, Erie or whatever. <laughs> um, but either way, it's just kind of strange. Like here, here you go. This is a good example. I-279 North, 233 feet. And then it just says I-279 North again in, in the same, like this doesn't make any sense to me why this would be here. Um, and again, US 20, US 20 West, US 20 West, you know, I, I see it's like doing some turns and stuff, but I don't know, it's, it's all within like, I don't even know, like half a mile of each other, maybe. So I, this could be like a turn in the highway, you know, um, that's what I think this is, because that, that's what I got from my previous ex experience coming back from Hershey is there was a slight bend in the highway and it was like, continue this way, but there was no other way to go. <laughs> so I've just found a few, you know, finicky things like that with the GPS. Um, so that's just something to watch out for. Um, make sure you look at your turns and you see where it's taking you um, because it, it may or may not send you somewhere uh, you don't want to go. And to further expand upon this, I don't think you can tell it to not take you on toll roads. So you can see search, gas, home, save, recent, you know, and more. So search sends you to here. You can type in your, your jazz, whatever address you want. Um, and then you go back to search and you can do home, you know, which would take you back to where you set your home. Gas will show you recent gas stations, saved as saved places, recent is where I've been going, and more. So you can see like restaurants, airports, banks, dealerships, tourist attractions, you know, just random stuff but no option to say, I want to avoid toll roads. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, be very careful when you're using the GPS. Uh, I don't know if there's a way to, you know, set it to not take you on toll roads. There may be. Uh, I haven't figured that option out yet. Um, but yeah, just something to keep in mind. All right, so number five would be just a little hint or a, a tip for you guys. Uh, if you have your bike stored in the winter and whatever, I've made previous videos about this, but there is a socket underneath your bike right here. I don't know if you guys can see that very well, but there's the socket here. And you just plug your battery tender right in here and it, and it charges your bike for you over the winter. So you don't have to, you know, take the seat off, pu put a tender cable in yourself and like hang it out or whatever and take cables or uh, panels off and stuff. Uh, you can just plug it straight in to the bottom of your bike. So as is, you know, standard for air-cooled motorcycles, the exhaust can get very warm in the uh, summer months here in Pittsburgh. So as you can see, if you're sitting here, your leg would go quite literally right past the cylinders and the exhaust, and it gets really hot like right here um, in the summer. Uh, and, and, you know, same goes for this side here. You, you got your cylinder head over there too. Either way, uh, it's very toasty up in this area here. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, but that is only when you are sitting. I have noticed it get pretty hot when I sit in traffic, but when you're scooting, you know, as is with, you know, air-cooled engines, as you move it cools off. So uh, it's not too bad when you're moving, but just something to keep in mind. It does get a little toasty. The, in, the Chief does uh, come with, you know, rear cylinder act deactivation, 
So I keep that on all the time. It, I really haven't noticed any, you know, funny business with that. So it uh, just kind of cools off the back, you know, right where you're sitting. So uh, just something to keep in mind. All right, so the seventh thing would be the stock suspension. Uh, now, I, granted, I am a bit of a doofus, and I have not adjusted this at all since I got the bike. But um, the suspension, as it is from the factory, can be a little rough, uh, for lack of a better explanation. Um, bumps can get a little hairy at times, uh, but I, I think it, it will be solved by just simply you know, adjusting the springs and uh, the, the preload or whatever you call it um, so that, you know, I don't get hammered by uh, potholes and stuff. But uh, that's just something to keep in mind. Definitely tune your suspension when you get your motorcycle. So I think you guys may or may not know this, but uh, the Chief comes with cruise control. That That's what this uh, little button here is. You can set it, you can, you know, up and down, you know, whatever. Um, and just a few things about the cruise control. There are a multitude of ways for you to stop the cruise control. So one would be simply rolling the throttle forward. It has a little play here, and you can simply just crack it, crack it forward really quick, and it takes the cruise control off. Another way would be the front brake, the rear brake here, or if you really want to be daring, <laughs> you can do the clutch as well. Um, or you can just hit the button again right in the middle and that'll turn it off for you. So there's just a few ways to turn off the cruise control. Uh, it is nice that the bike comes with cruise control. I have used it a, a number of times, uh, but I feel like even when I am using the cruise control on the highway, I'm sitting like this, right? And my forearms just take the brunt of the wind and I'm holding onto the bars. So I feel like maybe adding a windscreen or maybe the sport chief fairing would help uh, take some of that wind resistance away and make the cruise control a little more uh, useful at least on my model and, and again i have the chief dark horse uh, which does not come with these bars um, it comes with the drag bars so these are the cruiser ones that kind of pull back a little farther so either way i digress cruise control is cool and uh, i'm glad indian motorcycle put that on this bike so if you guys have come across anything about the Indian Chief that maybe I didn't cover in this video, please uh, leave a comment down below. I'd love to see what you guys uh, have discovered about the Chief. Maybe there's something I left out that you guys think is important. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, I think that's about it for today's video. And you know, I, have, uh, you know I, I appreciate you guys sticking around. I have a few dry spells here and there. Uh, this video is probably going to come out a month after <laughs> my last video. So I, you know, I appreciate you guys sticking around. Um, in fact, we've gained a few subscribers. We're at uh, 427 or something at the moment, if last time I checked this morning. Uh, so thank you very much, guys, for, you know, subscribing and sticking around. Um, I am going to record a few more videos today, so hopefully that gets me back out and do a regular cadence. But, um, yeah, we'll see. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.